Alright, we are now live on uh, at least YouTube and Facebook. Great. Should be just a couple of seconds before we're on uh, on Twitch itself. You know, I, I, I come from the world of uh, news, and so I'm used to this kind of freeze-in-place pause. Yeah, well, right. Hello, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> Little lag time. Indeed. It's all right. All right. I have word from our chat room that we are now live. So hello and welcome again to Court of the Rings here on twitch.tv slash stream, youtube.com slash Lord of the Rings slash live, and facebook.com slash Lotro. Thank you very much for joining us. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button on YouTube, that follow button on Twitch that like button on Facebook if you want to be notified for when we do things just like this. Today on the stream, we want to welcome back composer Chance Thomas. Thank you very much, Chance, again for joining us. Hey, Jerry. It's great to be here. Hello, everyone. And just to recap, uh, for those who perhaps aren't familiar with your work, you've done a lot of soundtrack work for Lord of the Rings Online over the years, and last week we were able to announce that you're going to be composing the music for our Mordor expansion here. Absolutely. It was a fun conversation, Jerry. I enjoyed chatting with you about it and loved the questions from the players. And I just wanted to take a, a second and just say thank you to everyone who's responded with so much enthusiasm and graciousness to last week's announcement. It actually puts a lot of pressure on me. <laughs> <laughs> It's like expectations are really high, yeah. and, and that's a good thing because I have really high expectations for the music in Mordor as well, yeah. and have spent the past week um, actually weaving some really interesting music that I hope everyone's going to respond well to when it comes out. It's one of those things where you're know, on the development team, the content, quest makers, landscape designers, they are feeling some of that pressure too because... On the one hand, it is a huge honor to be able to realize Mordor and Lotro after 10 years <laughs> here and see, you know, the fate of the ring and some of these other things and bring that to life in the game. On the other hand, you're you're the one who needs to make it good, right? So right. it's uh, a, <laughs> exactly. a little bit of a challenge there. But uh, pressure. <laughs> exactly right. We have yeah. another big announcement, though, today. And so yes. let us cut on over and just let that happen. Let's let it roll. Do you have sound, Jerry? I do. Yeah, you probably don't. Sorry. I can't believe it's been 10 years. 10 years since we first stepped into Lord of the Rings Online and started having these adventures in Middle Earth. Not to mention 10 years of music. I recently sat down with Sarah Reed from the Musician's Toolkit to talk about all these great memories. It's a chance. This is very exciting. It's 10 years. I'm curious when your world and the world of Tolkien kind of collided. Where did it all begin? So we're celebrating 10 years with Lord of the Rings Online, but my story actually started much earlier than that in 1998. When I received copies of the literature and started to dig in and discover what the professor said about music in his world. I'd grab a stick note, I'd put it in for quick reference later, I'd underline it. Here's a great example, listen to this. With pipes and flutes, with bells on their hands, they begin a merry dance tune. So in contrast, there's a song that makes me feel completely different, and that was Chant for Sauron. And it's very creepy. Creepiness always comes from dissonance. And when you hear that, it creates this feeling of unsettledness inside of you. So another one I wanted to ask you about was a theme for Rohan. This one I really resonate with. I just want to listen to this one kind of on repeat. 
So Rohan is one of my favorite places in the literature and I wanted to get it right. This theme hangs on these little hooks of the Pajatura, which is very prevalent in Celtic and Old English music, which matters because Professor Tolkien drew his inspiration for Rohan from Anglo-Saxon England. So you've got this ba -da -da, da -da -da. Music can really transport you to another place in time. Sometimes it only takes a few notes. So let's do a little uh, Lord of the Rings name that tune. Um, how many notes do you think you need to nail a song from Lord of the Rings Online? Let's start with four. Four notes? Tom Bombadil. Yes. I love that one. It's so happy. The House of Tom Bombadil. This music transformed my career and gave me a platform so that I could take all of these places that we love in Middle Earth and bring them to life musically. I hope this collection of music will carry you away on the wings of your imagination. So here's to all the great memories and all the great memories yet to come. Welcome back. Uh, thank you so much, Chance, for that announcement. It's uh, great to be able to make that debut here on the show here today. And we're going to have a lot more information, a little bit about that in just a minute or two, including some, uh, you know, URL, or URL rather, for uh, people who might be interested in checking it out. It's available now. Just now. I mean, this yep. announcement opened the door. So, Jerry, I, I have to say, this is something that um, some of us have worked towards and dreamed about for a very, very long time. Um, I can't tell you how many emails I've gotten over the years and messages on Facebook and things like that saying, when can we get this music? And um, pulling all of the legal entanglements together and, and, yep, and figuring yep. out a path through all that with all the different publishers who've been involved over the years and the Tolkien estate. And it was, you know, it was kind of like, you know, the quest of the ring itself. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> well, cause I mean, you know, if you just think about the, the sort of corporate journey behind the scenes here, I mean, the, you know, the, the, it's, between, you know, Turbine and Warner Brothers and Warner Brothers Music and, you know, Huge Sound and, and your stuff, uh, Standing Stone Games, all that sort of thing that's been going on now. There's just a lot of people who had to get to the table and, and give thumbs up and, and do some whatever legal work needed to be done to make this happen. But uh, we are thrilled, thrilled to be able to to finally, you know, make this a reality for folks. Because, yeah, as, as a community guy, I often get that of, where can I get the music? Where can I get the album? And that answer is now. Uh, and you can get it if I can call up the URL. Again, it's hugesoundrecords.com slash lotro10. And we'll have a link to that on social media and all that sort of thing as well. Let me just kind of scroll over. For those who maybe don't uh, see the screen here, I'm just, oops, I'm trying to get Twitch to work. X split. Uh, it's a full double album hour and 20 minutes and uh it's essentially a two disc set of sorts it is right and this is the uh the download site <clears throat> in about three and a half weeks this will come out also on itunes and apple music and spotify and amazon and probably a couple of weeks after that we may have a physical product um in development to talk about as well. But what a collection. 
I mean, and one of the things that we wanted to do when we released this was enable people to to get a taste of everything on this on this album for free. So, like, if for example, if you click on Orc Hunt, <clears throat> go down sure. and click on Orc Hunt, and let's just give a little preview. So you'll have to tell me when the preview's over because I can't hear anything on my Sure, no problem. Cool. Yeah, that's great. And and there are previews for virtually all the tracks on this album here, too. Everyone, click on the yep. Grey Havens for a minute, too. Grey Havens. All right, it's there we go. Or cut. Here's a bit from the Grey Havens. And that's uh, that's there too. I appreciate it. I've, I've already got a couple of uh, questions from chat. People are very excited about this. So, uh, if they want to follow you on social media, they can probably find out more about this kind of physical release and that 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 might be happening in the future. Sure. Is that right? Probably the Absolutely. best way to do that. Yep. Yes. Um, is it going to be on Google Play? Do you know if that's the case or not? Uh, I think so. That's a streaming service, right? I. I think it's partially a streaming service, but it's basically like the iTunes equivalent for Android. Something yes. like that. So yeah, yeah. we're, we're going to get all of those um, commercial digital distribution outlets, and those will be that that release is coming on June twenty third. Nice, nice. Okay. So one of the things we tried to do with this collection was take favorites that you can find now, like we did a, a top ten countdown a few weeks ago, leading up to the April 26th anniversary celebration. So, th of course, there's some of those on there. There's Tom Bombadil. There's the theme for Rohan. But there's also stuff on this co in this collection that you can't find anywhere else, like the Chant for Sauron or the Grey Havens or Orc Hunt. You know, um, So this is quite the collector's edition of music from the game. Absolutely. Let me uh, just see if there's a, a couple questions in chat. All right. Let's see. Um, Chance's music continues to be my favorite part of Locho. We have a couple people saying the feels. Uh, they're very, very thrilled to, to see this music. <laughs> I have a couple of people saying they're, they've even got a few tears uh, after seeing that announcement and all that sort of thing. Yes. Uh, the moment I heard Grey Havens for the first time is the moment I fell in love with Lotro. So. Oh, what go. a beautiful comment. Thank you. <laughs> Let's see. Um, let's see. Just a lot of uh, we have a bunch of people here looking for that physical version as well as the digital version here. So the digital, just to reiterate, the digital version is available right now on HugeSound.com, and uh, let me call up that URL uh, slash Lotro Ten. And uh, in the coming weeks, we'll have more information about say physical releases and things like that from from huge sound records and and that sort of thing so we can follow we'll have it on social media too but but in terms of a formal announcement that'll be coming really from from your side of the the uh world musical world there so one of the thing i i am curious about you know a lot of people say to me oh you know it's all about streaming music it's all about digital downloads i have thought that they're might be interest if we did something kind of special some sort of special packaging for a physical product i've thought there might be interest but i don't know yeah. if, if there are people out there who would like to see a physical product can you can you let me know um you can you can write to me on facebook you can write to me on twitter uh, you can write to uh, standing stone games and let them know 
I hope you don't have loud notifications on your phone when someone ats you on Twitter, because I have a feeling you might be getting a, a fair number of those in the coming uh, hours here. Uh, well, and, I, if there, yeah. and if there's a lot of interest, that's a good thing. Then we'll definitely move forward with that for sure. Yeah, yeah. I, you know, I like both, right? They they both have serve their purpose. Um, I like digital on the com- on the computer on MP3 players, you know, on mixtapes and. and f- See, I just dated myself. Mixtapes, right? Uh, but, uh, but you know, I also so have a CD player in the car and such. Right? So, <laughs> yeah, right. Do they know that about you? Do they know that you're a bass player? I don't know if they. they yeah, you guys know I'm a bass player, right? Because I've I, I I've done a few theme songs, not for Locher so much, but for some of the other other uh, kind of things I've done, like podcasts and that. So. Tape Jeremy, like an eight we gotta, track. <laughs> we got to get you in the studio. We, do we do. I would love to. I've got a. I got a couple of albums of freebies out there. You can find online if you want to, like on Sweet. archive and such. So, hey, let me say something else yeah. about this particular collection. I actually, and I, I probably got as I tend to do with Lord of the Rings online stuff. I got really geeky about it, and I went through and I made all these edits. I've spent months and months putting this together, rearranging things, getting the ebb and flow just right so that in the end, this is a really fantastic headphone album. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. put this on and the flow of songs, the way everything works together, hands off from one to the other, it really takes you on quite the epic journey. Let me get total music nerd then for a second. And that is, you know, players will hear this music in game, but... Clearly, when it's played in game, it's not at say high quality digital resolution, which this music is. Right? It absolutely yeah. is right. The stuff yeah. when you put it in the game, you've got to compress it, which cuts out a lot of the higher harmonics, and um, you know you're sampling it at uh, greater intervals, which means you're missing a lot of the detail and the nuance. This is is high fidelity. Um, everything is. As as I intended it to be in the first place. So listening to this, you're going to get the full experience. You you won't hear it this way on YouTube. <laughs> yeah, 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 absolutely. Uh, let me see if we've got a. Um, have you ever thought about releasing sheet music for some of this stuff? This is comes from Rivers Dream Forty Seven over on Twitch. That's a great question. Um, I think we're just now launching this whole music division of our company and in fact this is our debut product this um, Lotro 10 commemorative soundtrack if things go well then we'll be able to do more things and and I could envision a day when we might be able to put some sheet music together and and put it out there for sure yeah 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 uh <laughs> So, uh, Beardoin represents a contingent of Europeans here saying, if we do get that physical release, will it be shipped to Europe? Do you know that? Is that, that's kind of technical. I don't know how much you actually know about that one. Can they ship it to Europe? Of, of course, you know, yep. anything, yep. anything can be shipped anywhere. It's just a, a function of packaging and, and, uh, freight costs and things like that. Sure. But sure, yeah, sure. I mean, if, if there's enough interest and we end up doing some physical product, uh, we'll figure out a way. Uh, two questions here from Martin Kroll over on YouTube. How do you usually find your musicians and singers for the Lotro tracks? Do you have sort of a, a standard roster of people that you tend to work with or how do you go about doing that kind of thing? So that's a great question. Let me tell you a little history. Back in 1998, when I was working on music for Sierra Online's uh, J.R.R. Tolkien's Middle Earth, I did a lot of research into these different ancient music societies around oh, the country. Nice. Yeah. You know, it's like <clears throat> groups of people who like to play medieval music or Renaissance music. And I found I was living in California at the time and I found a pocket of them in Salt Lake City, Utah. And so I flew from California out to Salt Lake to record some songs for that very first soundtrack that I started working on. And they were so great. So then when I was working under Vivendi Universal Games, put together a a group of themes for Lord of the Rings. And I came out to Utah and discovered that their orchestral musicians were also fantastic. 
And then when I wanted to record the chant for Sauron, which has never actually shown up in Lotro yet, but <laughs> oh, <laughs> um, I found that singers from the Mormon Tabernacle Choir, world famous choir, actually kind of enjoyed singing the dark speech uh, of Mordor, the black speech of Mordor. So oh, how uh, neat. So great musicians, great singers, great engineers, great studios, and um, they're just, they've been a thrill to work with for sure. Oh, very cool. Very cool. Uh, related question then, let me, sorry, let me call back up my chat. I was actually looking at your, ordering your soundtrack while you were talking there. Sorry about that. <laughs> I suppose it's not something to apologize for, huh? All right. Uh, yeah. how, how many pieces of music uh, from Lotro are recorded with actual instruments uh, as opposed to, say, some of the digital music in that shoot you? I guess it's an indication that that technology has gotten to the point that it can be hard to tell, huh? Right. Yeah. So um, I think that some of the other composers who've worked on Lord of the Rings online over the years have done uh, digital music. All the stuff that I've delivered... Um, we, we record with small acoustic ensembles, you know, um, lute, guitar, mandolin, uh, frame drums, whatever, um, and then orchestra and choir. So that's, that's kind of been the way that um, the Lotro team has used me over the years mm -hmm. to do the live stuff. Nice, nice. So at definitely everything you're going to hear on this soundtrack was recorded live. Uh, Druids fires a question. Have you ever seen video games live and basically can you get your stuff in there? <laughs> Do you know anything about that? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Tommy yeah. and I have been friends for many, many years. And when video games live came to Salt Lake City two years ago, I think it was, uh, we premiered the theme for Rohan in oh, the nice. show right, uh, right. in front of the hometown crowd. And I actually got to conduct, which is a funny story. <laughs> I shouldn't tell this story, but I'm going to. So as you listen to Theme for Rohan, it probably seems to just sort of flow naturally, but there's actually a lot of meter changes. Um, you know, we go from 6-4 to 5-4 to 4-4 to 6-4, you know, a lot of meter changes to try to create this very smooth flow. And I got up to rehearse the orchestra earlier in the day, and I couldn't keep track of all the meter changes. <laughs> I kept getting lost. I was like, wait, wait, no, hang on, hang on. Let's, let's go back again. And all these musicians are looking at me like, are you serious? Did you write this or what? But eventually, you know, I, I, I pulled it off. And, you know, the, the, the performance that night was fantastic. Um, but, yeah, <laughs> it was a little embarrassing. Nice. Like, wait, why did I change meters so many times? <laughs> right. Uh, let's see. Actually, I guess one of us, uh, Earbold, over on Twitch says the Sauron chant actually is being played during the Blackgate cinematic at the end of the North Athelian epics. So maybe Good. it is out there. All right. Good. Good. Uh, are we going to see... Make a reappearance soon. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Are we going to see any tracks uh, with Taylor Davis maybe in the future? Because I know you've worked with her, right? Yes. Uh, yep. Taylor's fantastic. So I would love to do another project with Taylor, but nothing has been revealed yet. So okay, stay tuned. Mm, any other questions? I think you may have answered this a little bit in your 10-year retrospective, but what is a Lotro song that you keep going back to uh, in terms of something you listen to for inspiration while while writing pieces for Lotro? Interesting question. So I, I admit sometimes I will put on this soundtrack as I've been trying to find the right flow and make sure that everything works nicely. I'll put it on in the background and, and just listen to it. And, um, every once in a while, like when I hear, heard all of those, uh, cool percussion sounds and chanting in orc hunt, I thought, Hmm, I could utilize that again in this project, or I could use that approach in this song. So occasionally I will find some inspiration 
from the old music. Nice, nice. All right. Um, I think I've taken about a half hour of your time here, so I don't know if I want to take too much more of it. I guess is there anything we should sort of uh, wrap things up with here, kind of reiterate anything you want to mention? Yeah, two things. First of all, I have never been treated so well by so many people as this team of developers and this group of players and fans have treated me. And it's, it's been a wonderful, wonderful and touching thing in my life. And so once again, I just, I just want to say thank you to all the players, to you, Jerry, to the team at Standing Stone who've been so supportive of all this. Um, it, it, it really touches my heart. And that sounds a little cheesy, uh, little, I don't know. It's just me, all right? You know, I'm a musician, <laughs> a composer. I'm an emotional guy. What could I say? And it oh. means a lot to me. Um, and then the last thing I'd like to say is I want to thank um, Galen Rust and Denise Rust. I want to thank Federica Drotos. I want to thank Todd Demel. I want to thank everyone who had a hand in bringing this collection of music together and making it possible for us to release it now to the world. Um, that's also meant a lot to me. And so thank you to everyone. Great. Well, and thank you chance for, uh, for being able to make work with us and for all of us, I guess, to be able to bring this to fruition again, huge sound com slash Locher 10 to get the uh, soundtrack here. And, Get back to work on Mordor, huh? <laughs> Let's do it. Right. Thanks so much. All right, thank you so much. Yep. And I'm going to just uh, real quick here uh, change up a few things. I need to boot up the client, and I will be back with you in just a second. But in the meantime, I did want to uh, mention I did download that album while we were talking. <laughs> it's an MP3 format, a high-quality MP3 encoding and again you can just get that information uh, right as you see on the page here so and we'll be uh, tweeting out uh, Facebooking out that kind of thing a link to this as well and well when we do get to the point of that physical release announcement or any of that kind of thing you can be sure that we'll have it on our stuff as well but you know hey follow chance give him some love right and uh, he'll have that information for you as well if you did want to rewatch that interview that we played you can find it both on this page and on i believe chance's uh, youtube channel just in general so you should be able to call up that video again if you would like to all right and i oh am not quartermaster quartermaster is busy working on sales i haven't actually had an opportunity to log in for a little while because we've been busy doing Chance Thomas stuff. I was on vacation and what have you, so it's nice to nice to finally be able to log back into the game after a little bit of a break here. Tell us more about my bass playing. I am an amateur. We start by saying that. I am not Chance Thomas. <laughs> I started playing bass guitar in the late 80s. And I uh, was in... Started off being in a hardcore band, and then I was in kind of a punk band, then I was in an alternative band, then I was in a hippie band... Uh, in the 2000s, I was in kind of a fusion rock jazz thing. I also play the flute. Yes, I play the flute. Someday I will play some Lord of the Rings or Lotro music if I can on the stream. I'm a better flute player than I am a bass player. That is the reality of it. Because I've just had more years of, of practice on it. But I'm not going to pimp my own stuff because it's old. Nobody really cares. But, if you do care, you can find it online. There's some links out there to, to the stuff to download for free on, say, uh, Archive and all that sort of thing. Uh, let me get back... Oh, I want to know if you play a P or a J bass. I play a J bass. I am currently playing a Fender Fretless J. Four string is my current instrument. Yeah, Oxidation, I will uh, get to your question here in just a second. Let me quick look at chat, see if we got anything else we need to mention. All 
All right. Uh, I guess not. So I did want to, uh, before I get to like bonuses and, and some other kind of news of the world, as it were, news of the world, I wanted to mention that we did have a patch yesterday, right? Yesterday? Gosh. Memorial Day, right? Uh, so yesterday we did have a patch, and it really involved two things. One is it moved the Lotro store and in-game browser back in-game. We'll have a little bit more about that in just a second. But the other big thing is we did add, uh, we fixed the animation on the Dragon Fireworks for the 10th anniversary. So let me go and uh, use that for you right now. And you can see the new larger animation, which uh, is quite nice. It kind of was getting cut short earlier, so now it's the full dragon swing through the area. Yeah. What it should have been to begin with, but it was a minor, well not minor, but it was an animation bug. So now that that's corrected, that's awesome. Do that one more time just for cool factor. Cool. So it was a pretty minor patch overall, except for those those two things, so I'm not really going to go through the release notes. Uh, the other big change that happened was there was some work done mostly behind the scenes, although it does have some impact on, say, Vitality and things like that, uh, which were are meant to help us scale enemies and just generally scale mobs and get, find a better balance also make it easier to do as we increase the level cap with Mordor and beyond, right? So when we go up to <laughs> on uh, Mordor, the mobs will scale more consistently and all that sort of thing. Uh, so overall, it's really just some kind of behind-the-scenes math that changed. Uh, no specific areas or that sort of thing were addressed. It does have some impact on some vitality scores generally up occasionally maybe down slightly but I, nothing too major there uh, but i know some people were curious really what that's about and so that's really about transitioning to a behind the scenes system that is more supportable by our development team frankly is a little bit more automatic works more consistently and effectively as we go up so all right so Yes, Tellurian, great time to talk about this. Had a few issues with the in-game store browser. Um, this is impacting older operating systems in particular. Uh, Windows Vista and Windows XP. So what happened is, is the old browser used something called Osomium. And I'll let you do a Google search on that. But you may recall me talking about why we transitioned to an external store browser to begin with. And that was that we needed to be able to be PCI compliant, which is sort of a security compliance setting for credit cards and all that sort of thing. And so we needed to be able to use a, uh, well, our vendor really needed to be PCI compliant so we could no longer use Osomium. So uh, while we were transitioning to this new system we had the store open in the external browser. So now we've brought it back in. I will say that you can if you like the external browser there is an option to keep using it in the options panel. It's kind of nice. I personally kind of like it because I like play on two screens right and so you can kind of have the store open off screen and still see everything you want to see. But if you don't want to do that, that's fine. Um, it's just back in game. But it is now using something called the Chrome, mm, Chromium External Framework, shortened to CEF in corporate emails. And Chromium is based on a version of Chrome. You know, that's why it's got a similar name, like the regular browser. The thing is, is that XP and Vista are no longer supported by Microsoft, 
and Chrome only supports those operating systems up to a certain iteration, a certain version of Chrome. And the Chromium external framework uses a higher version of Chrome than is supported by Vista and Windows XP. Thankfully for most folks, it's not an issue because the number of people who still use Windows Vista and XP are, you know, fairly, fairly low compared to the number of people using Windows 7 and 10. But for those of you who are still using it, you're having a problem where you can't launch the game. Clearly that's an issue. And it's something that we have, as of yesterday, dedicated a lot of resources and are continuing to dedicate some resources to try to find a solution that'll work um, short term while we figure out what we're going to do long term there. I think it's going to come down to something like uh, a different version of the game client that'll include the old actually I don't want to say that it'll be probably a different version of the game client that will somehow be compatible I don't know if it's using Osomi or what it's using it'll somehow be compatible with um, Vista and XP not ideal but it's kind of a short-term thing, I think, while we look at other options. And, and we may end up going with something different. That's just kind of what I, the, the scuttlebutt, as it were, I've been hearing in the office. But nonetheless, we are working on a solution for Windows XP and Vista users. And I uh, do apologize for the issues. Um, thankfully, it's not impacting a large number of people because most people have moved off of Vista and XP. They have been long unsupported by uh, Microsoft. But there are still some people, clearly, who, who have older computers or, or, for various reasons, continue to use them. We also saw an issue yesterday with Windows 10 and Windows 7, 64-bit. So far, it seems that we've been able to track down those issues, why they couldn't launch the launcher, to the use of a third-party, unsupported, kind of shader equalizing thing called SweetFX. I don't know anything about SweetFX, but it was putting a DLL into the game client that wasn't really working right. So if you if that makes any sense to you, whatever, don't use it. Sorry, but we don't we can't support everything out there, and that's we hadn't even heard of it until people brought it up. So, but that's uh that's sort of what's what's up with that. So, all right. Can I comment on the recent changes to the scaling of higher level mobs, specifically those in the Throne of the Dread Terror Raid, and the issues that those are presenting for raiders? I saw some conversation about that on the forums in particular today. Um, I think in general, we will have to look for anything that truly is a gameplay issue and make some corrections kind of individually if it's warranted. I will need to do some further investigation. I was actually talking to a Lotro streamer. I was like, all right, well, get me the numbers. What what were the numbers prior and what are the numbers now? And I'm going to pass that along to the development team to see what kind of work they need to do. If it's a matter of something is just tougher, well, maybe deal with it, figure it out. But if it's really out of balance, out of whack, we'll take a look at it and make some adjustments. For heavies, the cap was 25k. Now it's 70k plus, along with other things. That requires a large rework for my builds personally. Going to be like that until Mordor, since throne mobs are like level 108. Oh, okay, that makes sense. That's interesting. Okay. That's interesting. I don't know the answer to the question specifically about is it going to be like this until Mordor? Is it truly working as intended? I mean, if it is a level 108 mob, maybe it's working as intended. But I'll, I'll like I say, I'm going to get those numbers and pass them along to the dev team to see specifically whether they feel something needs to be done there.
Is the plan to upgrade to a 64-bit client for Mordor or later? Most likely later. It's going to be done when it's done. We do have people actively working on it right now, but it's really just too early in the process to say when it's going to be done, but most likely after Mordor, because it's just going to take, take that long to get it done. Will the Dragon Fireworks be available in the store one day? Don't know. Don't know. Can I give you tips that would suit a level 30 player? <laughs> Community is better at that than I am. Yeah. I don't think the fireworks are going to be in the store. At least not these fireworks. Yeah. 64-bit <laughs> confirmed. Are you trolling me, Twisting Wagyu? How many times do I need to confirm a thing? Yes. Alright, so I did touch the scaling of the mobs. I didn't like that I couldn't preview cosmetic items. Yeah, uh, Lucite, or Lucity, and by the way, hello, nice to see you there. Um, yeah, we, you can now preview cosmetic items using the in-game browser, so that's nice. We are aware of issues in the patch with mitigations, Bloodborne. Uh, like I say, we're going to have to take a look to see sort of what needs to be done there. Yeah, I know you're in Slack. Hit me up with some numbers. With screenshots if you got them. Please. Will the dragon fireworks be unlimited? Yeah, those dragon fireworks are unlimited. It's just something you use from your inventory. Is there a Lotro beacon today? Yes, but it's running late because I was out of the office on Monday. I'm hoping to get it out by the end of the day, but we'll see how it goes. Have I responded to an ETA on character models? Uh, no. It'll be in beta. Probably not the first beta, just because um, we have other things to show off first, and it's not quite yet ready. But I would expect to see the character avatar update on Bullroar sometime later this month. This month being June, now that it is June 1st. Any further news on the Bjorning fix? Uh, we have a handful of Bjorning changes that are set to go into Mordor. I don't know that I would call it a full Bjorning pass or anything like that, because, you know, we're kind of doing things in smaller chunks now. But there will be a few Bjorning things in uh, Mordor, as I understand it. I've seen it on a whiteboard. So there you go. Sorry, uh, Vukin, uh, you can't just change the engine of Lotro. That's just sort of not how it works. I've talked about that before. Any plans to have a Bjorning mount? No. Not that I'm aware of. I believe... Ah, man, didn't uh, Dr. Octorthorpe mention that one on the anniversary stream? Saying basically, no. Wait, there's a Mordor expansion? Yes! Please give some details, I beg you. Uh, I don't know the details, I'm sorry. I can't can't get more info on the Bjorning because I just, I just frankly don't know it. Sorry. Alright. Let me do my Hobbit gifts. See if the loot gods shine upon me. Matham Hunter's armor. All right. Small pile of gold scraps. All right, so I need to collect the urn of Agamauer. Collect Bimbark Steed. Talk to Lee. Bring the letter to so-and-so. Meditate to listen. Oh, yeah, meditate. There we go. Oh yeah, uh, glad to hear that, uh, Winston. 
Uh, thanks for including the Radix Lecti anniversary event in the last weekend. Had a good turnout. Thank you very much. That is the point. That is why I do it. We want to get as many people to these events as we can. You put in all the work to put them together. We want to make sure that people know it exists. What is that unsettling song? It sounds like pop country. <laughs> Kidding. Can I comment on how moderation works and how we are addressing toxic players? We do have an in-game team that does monitor world chat. Uh, we are often quite complaint-based. Sorry if you've had a particularly toxic issue in recent days. Please report them. And we'll be able to hopefully take care of that as soon as we can. Sorry. Do you have to pay to be in Ettenmoors? I don't know. Do you? I thought you did, right? Sorry, that's an obvious one I should know the answer to. But I do not. Why was the Tarkrip shield appearance not fixed in yesterday's patch? Because it's been known for weeks. Uh, well, a lot of times, say, something like that would be something that would go into a larger game update rather than a smaller one. Um, you know, we can't just... We have to be careful about what, what you version in and all that sort of thing. So, we'll see. I would expect if, if we know about it and we've got a fix in place, it'd probably be ready for... For mortar, I would guess. What is attacking me? Oh no, she's attacking me. What's your dealio, man? Here I am trying to save you and everything. It's not very kind. I am driven from this one. Well, I mean, I didn't mean to hurt her. It's kind of her fault, you know. Oh, okay, good. Did I just sing the Price is Right music? Probably. <laughs> I love the Price is Right. <laughs> no one believes me, but I saw once an episode of that where someone got hit while they were using the, the, the spinny wheel. They came back from break and they had put him in a chair. person was fine. I wish I I could, uh, I wish the internet would help me out on that one. I can't have been the only one to see it. About the Bjorning Mount, you can't use dash unless you've attacked something. I guess that's intentional. Um, probably, but you raise a good uh, consideration as to why. That kind of thing might make sense. Are there any members of the SSG team that previously worked for Turbine? Yes, just about every single one of us. Uh, SSG is made up uh, largely of the old DDO and Lotro teams from Turbine. We have to, you know, hired a few people since. Some of those folks have actually also worked for Turbine in the past. But we do have a couple of just kind of new folks from other things. Neat Druid's Fire. But yeah, so just about all of us are from, you know, the old Turbine, now Standing Stone games. Basically, the teams remain largely unchanged.
sorry. Do you need something? Will you lend me your ear? Um, it's level 25. Uh, I don't know about that. Thanks, Earthling, on the scavenger hunt stuff. I would reiterate, make sure you're keeping those scraps of paper. You're going to be a very sad person if you don't. Uh, I know it's a hassle. Do it. Uh, will there be an inspired greatness bug fix? Um, I have heard that come up, so I'm going to say probably, but I don't have an ETA on it. Any cosmetic pets coming with a mortar expansion? Stay tuned! Can't really get into that at this point. Any chance of getting more account-wide steeds? Probably. Eventually. How is it working as intended that you now have to slot 34 out of 50 essence slots into mitts to cap it for T2C now? I'm not saying it is working as intended. I'm saying we're going to take a look at it. Uh, we do not have a specific PvP dev. PvP is something that we try to support when we can. Oh, someone, someone, oh, desert. Owl 97. You just made my 2017. Someone linked a video to this Price is Right thing I was talking about. I knew I wasn't lying. Awesome. Can we say what the level new level cap might be? Nope, not yet. You'll see it soon enough on Bull Roar. It's her fault she was possessed? Talk about blaming the victim. I know, I'm sorry. That was really cruel to me. That was totally inappropriate, and I apologize to Idramen profusely. I don't know, is someone trolling me? No. How soon is soon enough? Not soon enough, right? That's the answer to that question. Is it possible the price for a Helm's Deep to drop a bit? Uh, I haven't heard of any plans to do that, but potentially. Will the character model revamp include new voice effects? Gosh, that's a great question. I think so. I think so, but I'm not sure. Will we have a page where we release expansion details so we know what we get? Yes. When we're ready to take pre-orders for Mortar, there will be a page up for sure. That'll talk about all that kind of thing. Uh, no plans for an EU server. Sorry about that. Guy in Cyrillic. <laughs> Got some T2C uh, people who are getting crushed, huh? <laughs> Any plans to allow us to die shields? I think there are some technical reasons preventing that. But I don't know. Any chance of other races getting cool shout phrases like dwarves? We totally should do that. Any new pipeweed strains coming anytime soon? I haven't heard of that. Yeah. Uh, will the price of Mortar be comparable to Helm's Deep and Riders of Rohan? I think it'll be in the general ballpark, yeah. Yep. All right, and I'm at 12.58. I think I'm going to dragon firework these folks again and then call it a stream. I have a lot to do. i got to get out. Oh, by the way, Hob Nanigans is active through Sunday. Got to get the beacon out. Got to do some DDO work. Got to get uh, localization in. By the way, I am also working on a, 
update to the community guidelines. Uh, that's pending localization as well, which is pending me having the time to submit it to them. But uh, that's something that we can expect probably within the next couple of weeks as well, if everything goes well there. Any info for the pre-release date? Sorry, can't let the cat out of that bag yet. And thank you very much for watching Court of the Rings here on twitch.tv slash LotroStream, youtube.com slash Lord of the Rings slash live, and facebook.com slash Lotro. Give us a like on Facebook, give us a subscribe on YouTube, or give us a follow on Twitch, or some combination of the three. If you want to be notified for when we go live with shows just like this one, we do have a new schedule up on Lotro Stream, so if you want to find out when people are streaming, we have people just about seven days a week. I know I have heard of at least one new show coming, and I think two. So uh, stay tuned. We always have some more, uh, a lot of interest in people streaming on Lotro Stream. If that is you, if you have some practice live streaming and you have an interest, uh, you can reach out to me. The schedule's getting pretty full. But uh, particularly if you maybe stream during some non-prime time hours or whatever, let me know. And uh, perhaps we can get you on. You can get in touch with me through Twitter on Locher. I check all of our social media. You can also find me, Cordovan, on the forums and send me a private message. I do read everything that I get sent to me in private message. I can't always respond to everything. But if it's about the live stream and you wanting to stream... I will get back to you. Thank you very much for being here. I will see you next week. Have fun.